even before half the greenhouse buckled from the weight of back-to-back -back wet winter snows, the design was nebulous. Hollow steel curved into arcs, then screwed into four-by-fours and pine studs. A high school gym surplus shower curtain was strung aft to aft and rope rigged just where the steel had bent and broke to salvage the half of the greenhouse steel curved like a translucent egg. Floundering ship that never keeps out water or leaves its moorings. But still, it is a simple enough idea. The half of the greenhouse with the huge gas heater crumpled as steel snapped plastic ripped peeled back, flapping in wind, so where to go but to the other half. The cot I sleep on, rising every two hours to chunk wood into the brick-lined 55-gallon drum, the annuals and perennials leaf dark from cold, shifting a little when the warm air sifts and fingers through the tangle of bedding flats. It's a job of sorts to pay what food I grow and a place to sleep, safer than the streets. Each gust of wind rips the greenhouse plastic from the frame, then slams it back down so that bedding shelves and hanging baskets shudder, and I grow to believe this tattered plastic is the loose skin that separates the worlds, and I feel expected, self-conscious, aware of an unknown gaze waiting for something, perhaps death, to reach through the salt shore of my skin and jerk some unknown part of me through my mouth's roof to blasted air, to a place I imagine smells scrubbed and like wild roses and fog curling from a flooded field at two in the morning, early May, cows restless in the distance, creek hurling past. But now I know only the frogs' moans under the bed, lightning-felled trees sending out fresh stems all along its trunk, green furl of new plants, tender and moist. And that smell, unnameable, clean, reborn, stretched from somewhere, a strange and waiting place to here. Plate, spoon, knife, cast iron pan, rope I pull myself up with, futon, pillow, seams, bleeding feathers, desk lamp hanging by its cord from the metal hoops beside the one pair of dress plants, the sun-splotched coat, water hose coiled on the ice-slivered gravel, how I name myself now, and this, flats of plants, flats of bone flecked wet, black loam, slim seeds slipped into soil so rich it breathes. The winter sun looks like polished stone and olive outside is washed in a strange yellow light, roof of clouds unbroken and full of rain. I work all morning, elbow deep in sphagnum and peat moss. Big beef, Primero, Napolitano, Marjoram, Sweet Valencia, Mortgage Lifter, Tennessee Cheese, Bloody Butcher, Boxcar Willie, Big Boy, Lemon Boy, Better Boy. If clouds are the clothes of gods hung out to air, then today it's the lesser gods whose rags bunch and tangle along the lines of heaven's alleys, tied window to suit grimed window. On days like this, my body unhinges this focus on particulars, this disappearance into pain, reaching, teaching me what death is, tumbling me out of myself as I lay another seed flat along the wood shelves gray with age, then pull myself up. Though sometimes the baseball bat beating of the herniated disc is so great, I think that surely something else tugs me into light, into another day. Big Bertha, Early Girl, Sweet Baby Girl, Brandy Wine, Caspian, Pink Celebrity, Lavendalia Augustifolia, Nepeta Cataria. Stretched out now, seeds softening, transplants, bruised roots, tender and dependent, incubating under this artificial sky. And as I chunk more wood on the fire, raise and lower the pump's handle, turn the hose to the finest mist, rain begins, earnest and steady, 
falling to the snow-saturated earth, tunneling through mud and roots and burrows of shivering mice, and falling on raptors, scouring the fields for those mice, on worm and cardinal and starling, on rat's vein and rats alike, rain to rise again, surely as the dead on their last walk, their trek across the trail of stars we call the Milky Way, soon to rise again, rise to air, stumbling along as all things must. On this light-dazzled, star-spangled bridge of terror, we say yes to this thing we call life, lucky, lucky labyrinth of life. Waking with the fine snow of my own breath laced across my face, I scratch a stranger's name on the ice-slaked plastic. Swinging above my head the wrist-thick rope with which I pull myself from the army cot. Sun crawling over the pines prisms through the interior frost and turns it to water and fog so that the greenhouse becomes a phantom of itself. Mist rises, ice melts, Plants unfurl from their cold, wet sleep to stretch and finger steam as the sun staggers higher and shafts of light swell and tumble and scur through the drizzle. Then the plants blink, fully awake, their veined blood beating faster and the greenhouse opens like a bleached eye. 